Hello there and welcome to A-Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at modelling with volumes of revolutions so we can answer questions from exercise 4D. If you've seen exercise 8, 4A, 4B and 4C, then there's no new maths in exercise 4D. It just carries on from what we've done before. It just gives it a real life context to the question. So let's have a look at the first one then. Here we have the context is the diagram to the right shows a model of a goldfish bowl. The cross section of the bowl is described by the curve with parametric equations x equals 2 sine t and y equals 2 cos t plus 2, where t is in between pi by 6 to 11 pi by 6. Where the units of x and y are in centimetres. The bowl is formed by rotating this curve around the y-axis to form a solid of revolution. Part A is find the volume of water required to fill the model to a height of 3 metres. So if we uh, draw a little line there at 3 metres, we want the volume below that. Uh, so in this case, let's work on part A first. So the limits for Y will be between 0 to 3. That's the Y limits. We're integrating between 0 down here to 3 up here. And then we'll revolve it around that axis there. And we need to find the limits for t, so as well as finding uh, dy by dt. So those are the two first things we'll do before we get stuck into the integration. So finding the limits first, we need to find the limits 0 and, uh, and 3. So when it's 0, let's uh, set y equal to 0 and then take away the 2 onto the other side and then divide by the 2 and then t will equal pi when cos of t equals minus 1. So the limit for t is pi. And is that in between the range? Yeah, that's in between the uh, domain pi by 6 to 11 pi by 6. And then when y equals 3, then uh, set y equal to 3, take away the 2 onto the other side, divide by 2. And in this case, you get cos equals a half, which will happen at t equals pi by 3, which again is inside the... Um, inside the domain, but also is 5 pi by 3 as well. So it will happen uh, maybe up here on the right hand side and then up here on the left hand side. You'd have to work out what the x coordinate is to work out whether it's left or right. I don't know which one is pi by 3, which one is 5 pi by 3. Uh, the two values for t for the corresponding second equation correspond to the two positions where we have on the diagram y equals 3. Yeah, so either here or here. That's a really nice little animation there. This one here is when t equals pi by 3. We could tell that by plugging pi by 3 into the x equation. 2 sine pi by 3, that would be root 3 over 2, that would be root 3. So this will be uh, x coordinate of root 3. But then when you plug in 5 pi by 3, you'll get minus root 3 uh, on this side here as the x equation, as the x coordinate, I mean. Okay, so what we're looking to do then, we only need to rotate one side of the bowl about the y-axis to create the solid. So just choose one of these values. So we're just going to be integrating between t equals 0 to t equals pi by 3, which will be up here. Sorry, uh, t equals pi down here and t equals pi by 3 up here. We'll be integrating between those two t limits and that will rotate it round when we introduce the integral. So limits in between pi by 3 to pi. What about the dy by dt though? Why are we doing dy by dt and not dx by dt? Well, if we're integrating around the y-axis, we need to use this second formula on the right-hand side here, where we've got x squared dy by dt with respect to t. So we need to do dy by dt. So we differentiate the y and you get minus 2 sine t. And there we are. So that's the dy by dt minus 2 sine t. And now we're ready to do the big integral. So this is the integral formula we're going to use. This is the parametric one where we revolve around the y-axis. It's x squared dy by dt dt. If we were revolving around the x-axis, then it would be the first one at the top on the right-hand side here. Let's plug everything in. So it's going to be t between pi by 3 to pi. And then it's going to be x squared, so that's this function here that will be squared. So limits went in first, then the x went in and it had to be squared. So that's going to come out as 4 sine squared t. 
and then dy by dt went in as well. And then we're going to integrate this with respect to t. So let's now simplify, let's expand the brackets, and we get minus 8 sine cubed t. And then we need to think, how do we integrate this? Well, the way we integrate this, I think I've shown you in a previous video, is to separate it into sine and sine squared, and then replace the sine squared with 1 minus cos squared t. And we've pulled the minus 8 out to the front as well. And then when we expand the brackets on that, we're going to get sine t minus sine t cos squared t. And why, was, why is this more helpful? Well, because then we can split it up. Sine t is an easy integral. And then this one here is an inverse chain rule style integral. We could use substitution for u equals cos. Okay. So yeah, so if, if you're wondering how we got from this first line to the second line, just try a substitution of u equals cos t and it will pop out nicely. Okay, so we'll now put the limits in. So we have to put pi in first and then subtract pi by 3 going in and then grab your calculator and work all of this mumbo jumbo out. So work out the terms individually and then uh, put it all into one line, and we're going to get minus 9 pi, uh, and there we are. And then we want the absolute value of this, because we're working out the volume. Yes, uh, we've we've probably uh, integrated it uh, the other way around to how it should have been, but, uh, but yeah, we can just find the absolute value of that, because we want a volume. So there we are. Okay, moving on to what looks like a part B then. The real bowl has a diameter of 48 centimetres. The real bowl has a diameter of 48 Find the volume of water needed to fill it up to the corresponding height. So, you need, uh, you can use volume scale factor here. Okay, so what they're referring to is this 48 is the diameter of the bowl at its maximum point in real life. Now, in our little model, we just used uh, a scaled down factor, which was a size 4 centimetres um, as the diameter. So the scale factor between, the, um, between our model and what it actually is, is a scale factor of times 12. Now, when you have a length scale factor that's been multiplied by a factor of 12, then the volume scale factor um, is going to be 12 cubed. So we've multiplied the diameter by 12, and then we've, um, we'll have to multiply the volume by 12 cubed. If we wanted to work out the surface area, we'd have to multiply by 12 squared. That's how kind of um, scale factor enlargements work when you go from a length to a volume. So in this case here, 9 pi was the answer previously, and we wanted to find the volume of water needed to fill to the corresponding height. That means still this kind of level here, not corresponding to where that diameter is, corresponding to part A, and then, so it's going to be 9 pi times that scale factor enlargement of 12 cubed. Okay, so that's all we're going to go through in this demonstration question here then. So now it's your turn to have a go at question four from page 88. So pause the video and give this question a go. So a scale model of a hot air balloon is modelled as a solid of revolution of the curve C about the y-axis. The curve C has equation x equals sine y square root sine 2y between 0 to 2 pi by 2, where the units of x and y are in metres. Find the volume of the hot model hot air balloon. OK, so let's get stuck into this one first. Um, we're looking for... Uh, I think we're just going to take these as our limits. I can't see anything else that we would take as our limit. Um, and then this is going to be our y function. So it's going to be the integral pi times the integral from pi by 2 down to 0 of x squared and then dy. So it's going to be sine squared y and then sine 2y. And then that's going to be dy. We don't have to do any dy by dt like we did in the example that we've just seen because it's not parametric, this question. Last question was parametric, this question isn't. It's just a straightforward xy equation. Okay, let's now start working this out. So it's going to be from 
0 to pi by 2, and then sine 2y is 2, so I'll factorize the 2 to the front, sine, so I'll put the n another sine into this sine squared, and then cos y. So there we are, this is what we've got here. Now the answer to this, I'm going to use a substitution of u equals sine y, and so du by dy uh, is going to equal cos y. So then dy will be replaced with du divided by cos y. So substituting in, I'm going to get from 2, so 2 pi is the front coefficient. I'm not going to bother changing the limits here. I'll just keep it as y equals pi by 2 and y equals 0. But it's going to be uh, u cubed. And then it's going to be, um, we'll leave the cos, u, cos y there at the moment. And then dy is going to be replaced with du divided by cos y. And now these two things can cancel out. So I'm now just integrating u to the power of 3 uh, with respect to u, which is exactly what I can do. So it's going to be, whoops, I can actually do this now. I'm going to start doing the integration. It's going to be 1 quarter u to the 4, win between the limits of y equals pi by 2 to y equals 0. OK, the next thing to do would be to bring back uh, sine y again, so it's going to be a quarter sine to the power of 4y in between the limits of pi by 2 to y equals 0. Okay, let's now substitute these in, so it's going to be 1 quarter. Uh, sine pi by 2 is 1, so 1 to the power of 4 is just 1, and then so it's, yeah, it's just be a quarter. So the volume here is going to be pi by 2, um, and that's going to be uh, volumes in metres, so it would be metres squared, cubed, because it's volume. There we are, so that's the answer to part A. Let's now move on to part B. The real hot air balloon has a height of 6 metres. Find the volume of the this balloon. OK, so when it says y equals uh, from 0 to pi by 2, what this is referring to is at, point, at one point it will be a height of 0, because remember y is equal to the height of the coordinate. What, the y-axis, the y-dimension is the height, and up here will be pi by 2, and that's the value for y. But in real life, this height is going to be 6 pi. So what's the scale factor from our model to the actual height? The scale factor enlargement is going to be a factor of 12 because this is pi by 2, this is 6 pi. So the scale factor, same as the last question actually, is going to be 12. So if we want to work out the volume of this balloon, then the volume scale factor is going to be 12 cubed. So what we're going to have to do for the volume of the balloon is to multiply pi by 2 and that gives me 864 pi and there we are that's the answer for this question here so that's all we're going to go through for chapter 4 then uh, make sure you have a go at plenty of the, the, the these sorts of questions here where you've got a real life context do appear quite regularly so if you've jumped through the previous exercises Pause and have some time on exercise 4D because these are the types of problems that you're going to be facing in the actual A-level further maths. Hopefully you found this video helpful and thanks very much for watching.